Hey everyone, it's Paul Bertarelli reporting from a very windy Sport Aviation Expo in Sebring, Florida. I'm on my way to build the rudder for a Xena CH750 Super Duty. Now you might think that these pudgy little editor writer hands have never wielded a Clico, but you'd be wrong. But enough about me. We're going to listen to Sebastian Heinz tell us about how investments made in affordable computer numerical control machinery have really radically changed the economics of manufacturing kit airplanes, but more important, they've really been able to reduce the build time. Let's get right to it. Using SolidWorks and uh, our CNC manufacturing at Zenith Aircraft Company has really revolutionized how we make parts and how we design and then supply parts ultimately to, to customers in the kit. Um, while the basic technology really hasn't changed, these are simple all-metal airplanes and, and you know sheet metal construction using blind rivets uh, for assembly, how we design the parts and how well they fit together and how with the, with the pre-drilled, uh, match-drilled final hole size element has really, really uh, revolutionized how simple uh, all-metal airplanes are to put together. Well, on the quality side, it's really uh, uh, made it a lot more uh, streamlined, uh, a, a lot more consistent. Uh, before, when a customer was drilling the individual holes, we were always under the assumption that a hole had to be in the proper location. And when we're dealing with amateur builders, uh, we design it, of course, with a certain tolerance in mind, where you've got a, and you design it with a fairly wide tolerance, but because you, you know that not all builders are going to do it properly. So, uh, um, you know, we, we designed that in, into the airplane. Now that we, we pre-drill the holes, we don't have to worry about that. So, for example, our rib flanges can be narrower and so forth, so we're saving on weight because we have fewer parts, uh, not as large parts, and so it really uh, benefits uh, uh, from the quality standpoint there. Uh, from the cost standpoint as well, uh, once we, we have the machines running, the nice thing about a CNC machine, it can run 24-7. And so it makes our production, number one, a lot more scalable because we can run these machines longer if we need to, but also it's a lot more consistent and it's a lot more predictable from that standpoint. So I think overall, the, while the cost of the machines is, is relatively high, uh, we can really amortize that over a, more parts and over a longer period of time. So I think from that standpoint, it makes it very cost effective to do so. The build time itself has gone down dramatically. You know, it used to take about a thousand hours to put one of these things together. Now on the airframe, realistically about 300 hours. So about a third of the build time because uh, typically we, when you're having to, to measure, drill, and then rivet, uh, you know, you measure not once, two times, or three times because you want to make sure you get it the right the, the right place. Same thing before you drill that first hole, that's always a most difficult thing. Uh, now we've already measured everything, we've already drilled everything, so a lot of that prep work that used to take a lot of time uh, has already been done for you. Uh, nice thing too is that the, the, the type of builder, it's, it's very well suited now for truly an inexperienced person that has no prior experience because you're taking an existing part, lining it up, going it together and riveting it. So there's really the, the skill level to do that is a lot less than having a blank sheet, piece of sheet metal, having to measure it out, drill it, and then rivet it together. So it makes it a lot easier to, quicker to build, but much easier to build as well. So how much easier are we talking about here? A caveman could definitely do it. Zenith gave me a rudder kit to assemble along with all the tools necessary to do the job. And that's not much. A bunch of Clicos, two sizes of rivets, a rivet gun, and some pliers. There's a paper instruction set with a checklist and also a scrollable SolidWorks output file that shows how the parts fit together three-dimensionally. And there aren't that many parts. A spar, six ribs, some brackets, and two big skins. About 30 minutes into the project, we had the basic skeleton of the rudder nearly assembled. Toward the end of the process, the parts get a little easier to fit. So uh, we're ripping through this thing, and we've got ribs in place on the rudder structure. And now we're down to one that uh, I'd asked about, and uh, we're, it's a top rib to this bent angle. Well, how do you know which direction it goes and which holes it goes in? And he points out the holes. Yeah, the yeah. holes have to align because they're all CNC drilled. They can't be out. And that's them. really the nice thing about it is, yeah. it, is it, it takes a lot of the guesswork out. Of course, there's the drawings and yeah. both and, the printed. And of course, you do have the drawings. We haven't really referred to the drawings much at all. Because you really don't need to. And um, okay, let me. There we go. Clickle that in place. 
There are about 400 holes in the rudder assembly, and of that number, only two or three needed a run through with the drill to sweeten up the hole alignment. I screwed up just one rivet that we had to drill out and replace. An hour into the work, we were ready to start the skin. The rivets are blind, otherwise known as pop rivets. The gun pulls the stem through, setting the rivet and leaving a small domed head. Okay, so we're an hour and 45 minutes into the project. Sebastian and I put on all the skin, clecoed everything, put, put the fairing on, and now it's a question of running a bunch of rivets. If the skin's clecoed, it's basically scut work, and it helps to have someone set rivets into the holes so you can come along and pull them on the fly. The rivets. Here it goes. Last one. Last one. Okay, so Roger, Roger took over as my nanny. Uh, Sebastian had to run off, so done, done. Two hours and about 10 minutes. Not bad. Excellent. 400 rivets or so, you said? Yes. And now Roger and I are gonna go flying, but not with this rudder. So the rudder I built was for this airplane, the CH-750 Super Duty. Just to be clear, this is not an LSA, but an experimental amateur built airplane. This particular airplane has a 205 horsepower engine from Aerosport. That's a Lycoming type four cylinder swinging a three blade Cato prop. Let's talk a little bit about uh, what the intent of this kit is. Uh, who are you seeing uh, as, a, as a buyer? What's the attraction? Uh, the attraction is uh, it's a very quick and easy aircraft to build. Everything's a matched hole kit. Is this the first full matched hole kit? Uh, no, our 750 Cruisers are the full matched hole kit, but they're not to the correct size, a lot of them, so the customer has to drill them to the correct size. This aircraft is going to be drilled to the correct size, so basically the customer, all he has to do is uh, click all the sections together and then add the rivets. The customer buys this, uh, how many different kits are there, or is it one complete kit? You can buy either one complete kit, or you can buy the in sections like the tail kit, fuselage kit, wing kit, fuel system, controls kit, and then the finishing kit. The finishing kit consists of like the landing gear, wheels, windshield, seat belts, everything that you don't need until the very end. And uh, what are the engine options? Uh, right now we're saying anything from 180 horse up to, you know, 260 horse. We have the Aerosport in this, which is 205 horse. So that's a wide range in uh, horsepower and engine choice. What does that do to A, performance, uh, and B, the uh, weight balance? Well, the weight balance, uh, we always will design the engine mount for whatever engine that you're going to be using to compensate for the weight balance issues. Uh, Performance-wise, yes, with the only engine we've used on this is the 205, so... Um, uh, 2,000 feet, we heading It's hard to say what it's going to do on 180 or 100 or 260 or something like it. But I believe that like helping 180 will probably be the ideal, ideal engine. Let's talk a little bit about this unpanel here. What's the thinking behind that and what's the technology? Well, the unpanel, the reason for that is you get so much visibility. You're going into a bush strip. You need to see everything as you're coming in. And you got all this open space. Uh, you know, some aircraft you fly, you know, you have the instrument panel way up here in your eyes, you just can't see anything. Uh, you can move the panel, I can't really move it around much with your cameras, but, so you can move it around, adjust it for your passenger or for yourself. Yeah, and by the size of it and the, the uh, visibility and the sharpness of it is incredible in any light. Yes. Uh, the Super like Duty kit is about ready to hit the market. For more information on it and other Zenith aircraft, see the company's website at zenithair.com.